What is up you guys, how you doing? My name is Nick Rochelle and welcome to the Night Owls Podcast. This is episode three. Um, I'm gonna try to gather a few things to talk about, especially now since I have so much more free time on my hands. Um, first and foremost, I guess we can get started with the fact that I'm actually using and operating um, a new software. I've actually, um, the software is OBS. Um, and I've actually been familiar with this, this software, but um, it seemed like I never had equipment powerful enough to either handle it or internet that was fast enough to handle it. And um, now, since I'm more stable, I was able to kind of figure things out. And um, now I'm using this software, which I really think is dope. The reason why I wanted to bring it up is because um, for people who are into content creation, um, I really think that you should, if you're not already familiar with either OBS or Streamlabs, this is a software that you really should get familiar with, mainly because I believe that this is the software of the future. Um, lately, I've been really focused on delegation, delegating the work, not doing everything myself. And besides hiring an editor to edit my vlogs, another thing that I did to edit my reactions or to take care of reactions, because it's kind of hard to find an editor for a reaction channel, because a lot of times you got to be fast with things. So um, I, I got into OBS because literally what happens is once you record your work, once you're finished, the work is done. You, you do the editing while you're recording. Now, there can be a learn, well, there is a learning curve when it comes to learning the keys or creating a deck to push certain buttons to make certain things happen. Like for example, if I hit this button right here, it pulls up our audiobook uh, store promotion, which I want to talk about that later. Um, or if I hit this button here, it makes me disappear, come back. Or if I want to show our, um, our my Night Owls podcast picture, it does that. If I want to pause the music, it does that, hit the P. And if I want to resume it. So, um, pretty much this is the, the whole point of me doing all this is because it's helping me obtain so much more freedom, which in my opinion, to people who are aspiring to become business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call it, your ultimate goal should be freedom. You should have some type of theme for your life, period. Um, I always talk about the theme that I have for my life and one of the main things is freedom. So because I have that in my head, the thought of freedom, every move that I make, everything that I do is centered around my freedom. And um, the reason why this has helped me so much on my journey is because no matter what you do, no matter what you get caught up in, there's always a way to put chains around yourself. Um, so as a matter of fact, when I first realized this, I was in my early 20s, um, which I'm thankful for being very observant. Even though I daydream a lot and shit, I'm always inside my head and stuff. Um, I tend to observe a lot. And it was a time where I went to a storage facility trying to purchase a storage unit. Um, and I was talking to the lady who was in the front desk and she was just talking about how, yes, her, her husband, they own the entire storage facility. Instantly I'm thinking like, oh wow, that's, that's dope. You own a storage facility. So that's, that's your own business. That's money. You should be free. But when she kind of explained or broke down her schedule to me, cause they were baby boomers. So they were just used to the old school of just working hard and, you know, slaving for everything. And um, she was just talking about how early they have to get up every day, Monday through Sunday. She has to work the front desk and make sure everything is going correct. And then her husband, he does maintenance and work around the entire um, facility to make sure everything is going right and fixing things. 
And in my head, I instantly thought, I was like, these two, they, it seemed like they had figured it out. They started a business. They have multiple storage units that's bringing in this, this money from here and there. But they seem just as restricted or confined as, as me, as I feel right now, currently working at my nine to five. Why is that? And I was thinking, why is it that some business owners seem like they work harder than, than what they, than what you would do at a job, a nine to five job. But then you have other business owners where it seem like they're out and able to be on yachts and golf parties and, and have their freedom. Why is that? And one of the main things that I think contributes to that is delegation. So like I said, lately, I've been doing a lot of research on delegation and I want to talk about that even more, but first, let me see if I can pull up some beats y'all because today has been kind of, uh, kind of rough. Uh, let's see. I saw this beat right here recommended on my homepage. I was like, let me just start with the first beat. See what it's given. It says J Cole type of beat, but, um, let's see what it's given. A lot of times, instantly, I can tell when it's not something I fuck with. Let's see what this beat does. Especially the way I'm feeling. Um, I got news today, um, which I want to speak about this more on our podcast. Let's be brutally honest with my wife. But I had got news today that a, a cousin of mine's, um, which was when we were younger, we were all younger. They were more like siblings until my mom moved us out of St. Louis, but I always speak about them, how it used to be the six of us. And um, uh, one of the ones that I was the closest to, besides Ramonda, rest in, rest in peace to her, um, he actually ended up getting murdered. And um, it's crazy because, um, and like I said, I'm gonna talk about it more later, but um, I didn't even expect myself to cry. And I actually cried pretty pretty hard. Like I didn't expect it to come out like that. Um, so many different emotions. And usually when I'm really emotional like this, this is the best time that um, I can come up with some music. And um, yeah. Um, so, let's see, let me listen to that beat one more time. That sound really good, actually. Especially if you wanna just pop your shit. Let's see. What I usually do, like if I find a beat that I'm feeling, and I feel emotions in my body, what I do is I listen to it and I start flowing over the beat without words first. I start flowing over the beat without words to see if I can have some type of rhythm or some type of flow that I'm feeling, something that I would like to listen to. Because by now, if a lot of y'all watch me on other channels, if you watch me on like vlog channel or reaction channels, especially the reaction channel, you'll notice that I struggle with listening to people as far as the specific words that they are saying. I have, I guess what you call selective hearing. I hear pops of words and, but then uh, other than that, 
I'm listening to the tone of their voice, the flow of their voice, and the, I'm feeling the energy and the emotion that's coming out of their body. That is how I communicate. So a lot of the times, if you hear me have to look over to my wife, who's very observant, she's very analytical, she listens um, really good, and you act, hear me ask her, what did they say? Like if, I, like if I need a few more specific details, that's why. Because I have selective hearing. Um, and if I ever want to fully listen to your words, I have to put in, I have to bring in so much concentration power to like fully listen to you. So even when it comes to making my music, that's why I have to start off like that. I have to start off with the type of energy I want to shoot out, the way I want to hear the voice flow, like the rhythm and the tone of the voice, how I want that to sound. And then I start adding words to fill in or bring out the emotions. And nine times out of 10, I'm going to tell some type of story or talk about something like that in that way. But, um, yeah. So delegation, I'm going to talk about that. I may come back to that beat definitely, but, um, as a matter of fact, let me, let me, hold on. Let me save that. Let me turn that off. Hot beats. Hopefully y'all can see me. See all this shit you got to learn, but it's so worth it once you get the hang of it. Y'all can actually see what I'm doing now. Hey, Mike. Why be Jado reaching new levels? See, this is a cool beat, too, especially if you're feeling emotional, but it's, it's actually too emotional for what where I'm at, like, in my headspace. Like, I'm not, like, too mushy, you know what I'm saying? So this is actually almost too mushy for me. Yeah. yeah, I can already tell where that's going. But um delegation. So uh, like I was saying, um, that has really been a huge focus for me and I'm already feeling the difference. The fact that I'm able to sit in front of you right now and make this music is proven that um, that is working because I just didn't have enough time. I just had too much on me. So one thing um, every morning when I get up, every Monday through Friday, I make sure I listen to some sort of, hold on, let me fix this. Listen to some sort of motivational piece. And the latest motivational piece that I listen to, I don't know, I'm not gonna work on that later. That's annoying the shit out of me though. The latest motivational piece that I listened to um, about the art of, it was called, what did I do? Oh, yeah. It was called The Art of uh, Delegation. And this guy was saying that he went to some type of event and he asked a question um, to the guy who owns Fisher Price, the billionaire. He asked a question, he was like, um, can you tell me something that I should do or consider doing um, 
to become a billionaire. And uh, just one moment, guys. Let me see if I can fix something really quick. Let's go here. There we go. That's better. Okay. He asked, what should I do? And uh, he said he was shocked by the answer that Fisher gave. That's slightly better. I must still have to work on that. But uh, what Fisher said was he had to quit everything. And when he said that, he was like, what? He was confused. What do you mean by that? Quit everything. And what he meant was, what he said he meant was, you can't do all of the work by yourself. If, if you, unless you plan to stay small, like your business, your ideas, then cool, try to do everything. And he said he understand that when you first start a business, you're gonna have to do things like marketing, selling, um, designing, even all the way down to taking out the trash. But he said what you need to do is, you need to get really good at sales, because I mean, at the end of the day, when you have a business, your ultimate goal is selling something. And you, if you don't have training in sales, I highly recommend it. What helped me a lot was the fact that I worked at call centers. So that's all we did was sell. So it helped. I watched how they move when it comes to marketing and selling and all that. So um, not a lot of times when you're at your job, your nine to five job, and you may be pissed that you gotta be working, a lot of times just make the best out of it because you're learning some type of skill that you can use and apply to your business later. But um, so what he said was your goal should be to sell enough, like bust your ass and sell enough so that you can get to the point where you no longer have to at least start off with not having to take out the trash. So you start small with delegating whatever work you're doing, whatever tedious thing that you're doing. And he said, you need to get to the point where you try to quit everything as fast as you can. And it was an eye opener because, for example, like I said, I am, I hired someone to edit our vlogs. Usually, not only would I have to plan out the vlog, film the vlog, but then later I'll have to sit down for hours. Um, and depending on how specific I got or how detailed I got with the editing, upwards of six hours, six plus hours, you know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, so what I noticed instantly when I hired the person to edit the vlog, I now have an extra six to eight hours to play with. What can I do with that time? Can I come up with a new business idea? Can I spend more time with my wife? Can I spend more time on shit that I'm passionate about, i.e. making music? Um, and then with this OBS software, the reaction videos. Now, granted, I know a lot of people are gonna miss the extra editing that I did with those, but you're still gonna get a little sauce. But literally I would spend hours and my sleep was thrown off because when we finish reactions, a lot of times that thing gotta be dropped by the next day. So I'm up editing until like two or three o'clock in the morning. And now the fact that all I have to do is record and then I'm done, upload, create a thumbnail, that's an extra, how many more hours? So I just freed up between 10 to 16 hours. <laughs> and um, what can I do, what will I do with that time? What would I do with those extra hours? And like I mentioned before, we just started a new audio book store. And see, and what I've noticed is that is my gift. That's what I'm really good at. I'm really good at sitting down and coming up with ideas, business, business ideas. So whatever you're really good at, whatever you are needed for to make things run, that's what you need to be able to focus on the most. So yeah, do I like editing? Yeah. Am I pretty good at it? Yeah, I got really good at it. But that's not something that I need to be focusing my time on because I can be focusing on other business ideas, i.e., the bookstore. And the thing is, 
what my goal is going to be is to continue to try to find ways to quit doing certain things. And then also using this brain to try to come up with more ideas. And I think a lot more people need to do that. And they do not need to become a slave to their creations. So I hope that helps somebody. But yeah, like I said, we did start an audio book store and it's called Freaks. And um, it's black erotic short stories. And what I love about these audio books is they come with music, sound effects, background ambience. And it allows the listener to have a more immersive experience. And it allows them to feel like they're actually in the story or in the book. And um, I remember falling in love with the thought of listening to entertainment on the go. Uh, when I heard a radio show a long time ago, it was a church radio show, but they used to make it sound like you were watching TV. And um, if you want to check it out, definitely visit our website nickandcarla.com slash freaks. Definitely, definitely, definitely check that out. Let's see if we can find uh, another beat really quick. Hmm. This right here says, um, uh, Free, chill, hip-hop type beat. Let's see what it's giving. sound it's a good song to like listen to like to vibe to but um it i'm not experiencing any wild moments if if that makes sense but i like it it's something i would listen to like while i'm writing in my journal or something That type of beat is in the last one and the one before that. It's, it's kind of like those riding beats. And those are the type of beats where if I heard it and someone was just rapping, especially depending on how they're rapping over the beat, I would just kind of daydream over it, maybe. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a good beat to choose. It's just not my style or nothing that I would just listen to if someone was rapping over I'll listen to the instrumental only but I wouldn't listen to someone spitting over it it would just be too boring for me <laughs> Trigger nothing. <laughs> oh, I figure I did. Um, let's see. Turn that off. Let's see what uh, Willow Smith beats they got going. Let's see. What's this? <laughs>
All right. Um, so I think I want to finish this uh, podcast off with talking about one more thing. And um, it was the fact that I had a um, encounter with an owl, which I don't know exactly why I feel so connected to owl. I even have it tattooed on my uh, my arm. Um, which the owl symbolizes a lot of things, wisdom and all that, but I've never heard an owl in its natural habitat. I've never, I've always heard them on TV or the internet, but I've always wanted to hear one. And um, when I was trying to learn this new software, I had a, just a lot of things going on, very frustrated. Emotions was just all over the place um, because it was just so hard to figure certain things out with this software and, some, and a few other things. But, um, all of a sudden, when I was like at the climax of my frustration, I heard an owl outside of my window. And I was like, it took me a while to even catch on to the fact, it's like I heard it, but I was so caught up in what I was doing that I didn't, I didn't catch on to the fact that, yo, you're listening to an actual owl. And so I stopped everything that I was doing inside of this creative space. And I walked to the balcony really fast. <laughs> and I opened up the door and I just stood out there, took in like three deep, deep breaths, and I just listened to the owl. So um, anytime I have an experience like that with an animal, a bug, a color, a noise, um, numbers, I'll try to understand intuitively or think intuitively what did what did that mean for me and um i'll also look it up online to see what they're saying the meaning is and what i saw online was matching up um with what i was thinking which is the fact that i need to just embrace this change that i'm going through uh, which one of the main focuses is delegation and just trying to upscale my business and make wiser moves. And um, I looked it up and that pretty much what it was saying. It was saying prepare for change. Um, it symbols death, which when you hear death, it doesn't mean you're gonna die. It means that you, the old you is kind of going away and you're going through some type of transformation to embrace it. So the fact that that owl arrived at the height or the climax of my frustration, it just, it was powerful. So I, I highly recommend anytime you have an encounter, like especially if you're really intuitive or in tune with your higher self, if you have a encounter that sticks out to you where it plays in your head afterwards with a color or animal, a number, uh, coincidence, go within and try to understand what that may have meant, what message your higher self may be sending your way. Or you can even go online and Google it and see what that means. But it helps, especially when you feel like you're going through shit. But, um, yeah. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Let's go ahead and pull that back up. And um, thank you so much for tuning in to episode three of Night Owl's podcast by Nick Rochelle. And I really look forward to talking to y'all again. I hope y'all gained or got something out of this podcast episode. And hopefully I can upload uh, more frequently now since I have so much more free time on my hands. But all right, y'all.